27 minutes to the top of the hour. Good morning, Malik. Good morning, Raymond. Good, good morning. morning. And how are we all doing this good, good, morning? Good, 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 oh, good, good, fantastic. Good, good, good. Fabulous. Mm. Oh, nice. Is it fantastic or super fantastic? <laughs> super fabulous. <laughs> all right, all right. Let's take the front pages, shall we? Let's start with the Business Finder newspaper. Bank's capital hits $9 billion ahead at the end of February 2019. Help smoke out bad nuts in the insurance industry in China to build industrial city in the central region. Now, the Daily Guide has the building which is already happening and uh, the First Lady opens new kids unit at Kolebu. I was killed over snails. We brought you this story some days ago. A Siakwa teacher's dying words. Now, pass Wasi to share free SHS opposes. This is the president to students of um, uh, Inquanta uh, Senior High School. And CBG opens two new branches in Kumasi and impounded Rosewood release. That's on the front page of the Daily Guide. The New Crusading Guide newspaper has, we won't forget you, Krachiura tells Ekufuadu. And fallout from leaked bribery tape, Paramount Chief of Talency must resign as NDC youth organizer charging time for digital roadmap for Ghana. That's Vice President Dr. Mahmoud. Bawumia saying. Now, the graphic show business reported this morning. Blame men of God for poor content. Celestine Donko is the one saying that. And there's a request for a ban on senseless songs. This is a musician called Mr. Logic. Of course, he's being logical in this particular case, but one he's thing been, comes to mind. He's being logical in this particular case. Oh, okay. But uh, one thing comes to mind. Because There's I'm song. hearing illogical. You hear the song, logical, the, so I'm confused. the song that they do like they are sleeping, you know. You know that song, right? Omwada. Very good. And one of the, the songs I propose should be banned immediately. And what would be the legal basis Senseless for that? song. <laughs> what would be the legal <laughs> basis for that ban? I love that song. Oh, that song is a nice song. This is song, <laughs> senseless song. No, but, but what would be the legal basis for it? How would you classify a song as sens senseless because and therefore advocate, advocate that will, it should uh, be banned? Uh, uh, for that one, we'll do it. We'll ask a few lawyers to define you, that. You need to sleep. I that. Malik, go The Daily Statesman newspaper has Sile Muntari for AFCON 2019 question mark only in Ghana. Children, child care gets big boost. First lady opens new Kolebu pediatric and intensive mm. care unit. Plan to build bridge over OT is on course. Tasi Kufuadu reaffirming commitment. Now, the Chronicle is reporting this morning that Bono minister blames migrants for kidnappings and other vices anyway and court orders pastors to pay 650 CD for verbally assaulting MC. That's on the front page of the Chronicle too. The Daily Graphic newspaper, threat of terrorism. Security agencies meet churches. Chief Imam urges Muslims to report strange elements. Then Mrs. Sekufa opening that that um, pediatric center is, is also on the front page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Smuggling of petroleum products reduces. Pay more attention to mental health care. That's Dr. Kwesiwa say. Vibrant talk key to Ghana beyond aid. Agenda. That's Isaac Kose. Back page of the Daily Graphic newspaper. Hearts qualify for semifinals. Kotoko Pip 11 wonders in Kumasi and Wafu Zone B semifinals. Black Queens face Super Falcons today. Now, the Ghanaian Times is reporting this morning NIA staff arrested for ninth registration. NLA Napco trained six personnel to assemble solar powered e kiosks. There's one about eight fire service personnel dismissed between January and April this year. An assault on Dero FM staff. Interior Ministry receives reports and Sudan military agrees to a three year transition. Hopefully they will live by the three-year transition. Then let's start with the 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 biggest story happening around us, and which relates to terrorist acts. And that interview you had yesterday, uh, in which we were told about some of the things that has happening. Even four days ago, there was a terrorist attack in Burkina Faso. Four people killed in a Catholic church. Now, the churches in Ghana aren't taking this lightly. The security agencies themselves. Are not taking this lightly. The Daily Graphic has this report that the security agencies are, de are to meet today the leadership of the Christian community to discuss how to enhance security in the churches and to encourage awareness so that people will be security conscious and be aware of the things happening around them. And we had this fantastic story done by Kujo Yangsin yesterday who went to the, the one of the malls, carried a backpack, sat with people on a bench, left the backpack, walked away, came back a few minutes. It was there completely unnoticed or ignored by the person sitting there and other persons around. That is an epic 
demonstration of our lack of security consciousness in that story. Now, but the church leaders... And, and, and I can say this, that one of the persons who was sitting on the bench is was a plain clothes security personnel. That's what he claimed. He, he So he told Kojo that he's a plain clothes security personnel. <laughs> and that he observed what was going on. No, no, no. He, he didn't they... notice the bag. <laughs> Amazing. So he's a plain clothes security personnel. He said that he can't grant Kojo an interview because... His, his, his superior associate. Well, so the, the, the leadership of the, the religious leaders, both the church and the mosque, are not taking things um, lightly. So they are, some of them have, some of some church leaders have actually invited the police to come and train their, mm. the persons who man the churches on security consciousness and what steps to take to prevent uh, any untoward things happening. Now, the security agencies themselves have reached out to some of these churches and they are offering to help them to, to, to manage this. The chief imam himself, according to Daily Graphic, has urged Muslim, Muslims across the country to be conscious of strange persons around them. And, of course, this is in response to alerts that suggests that uh, the Salafi Jihadi group based in Burkina Faso mm -hmm. has been coming in and out of Ghana. And therefore, once they come in, they may mix with Muslim community and Muslims in the country. So the National Chief Imam Sheikh Usman Unuhu Sharubutu is urging the Muslim sects, all of them, the, the Sunnis, the Tijaniya, the Ahlul Sunnah wa Jamaat, the Shiites, all of them. If you see any suspicious unknown persons amongst you or unfamiliar persons amongst you, please alert someone okay. so that um, people can be aware and be sure that nobody is having any any um, any plans afoot? Do we have a counter-terrorism unit in this country? We do have. We do. Do we have a coordinated center for emergency response in this country? We're supposed to have one. I imagine we'll have. Okay. I mean, because ordinarily, mostly states, even most prepared states, have not been able to prevent terrorist acts. That's true. It's your response to where that matters immediately. So response to reduce casualty, response to actually make sure that systems don't break down completely and your security system is not shocked. But for states that can deal with flooding and other things, I always doubt our preparedness anyway. That's a very important point to Imon How but do we respond? But somebody actually told me something yesterday, and the person is in the security sector, that the receipt of Gitmo 2 actually helped our security mm -hmm. awareness okay. and the support that came with it. So all of these counter-terrorism units, they were boosted, the trainings went on, and alerts. The Americans are paying a lot more attention. They are supporting us in all of these areas, helping the security agencies. And I can imagine the defense alerts. cooperation agreements would also. Absolutely. I see. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you let's move on. We'll stay with the security services, but the fire personnel this time. Yes, this time our eight of them have been dismissed, and they were dismissed for various um, offenses from recruitment fraud through to impersonation to drunkenness, to failing to report on duty within uh, official working days, and stealing, stealing, amongst others. So the people in this particular group, in the eight of them, these were the offenses. They were taken through the due process that the system mostly requires them to go through. And we hope that this will not be like the pregnant women who had disallowed re-entry into the service, which cost us some 100,000 um, cities. We hope that this one, they went through the right process in making sure that they are dismissed. We also hope that it will send the right signal to other state institutions, especially security institutions. And, of course, there are also some other four people who are at the service inquiry because of different offences that they equally have to raid their structures of the wrong people. The police, for instance, they need to do it more importantly. Yeah, because, you know, the trust in the police keeps a drain going down, according to, you know, the last <laughs> six or so rounds of the, uh, the Afro-barometer. And the corruption, um, global corruption barometer, we often find that trust in the police. Yeah. yeah it's, and it's and often... after the hope-giving messages clearly... The trust will take it's a okay. major dip too. It's okay. okay. A smuggling of petroleum products. Yes, smuggling. yes, yes. So there's good news in this area. There's good news because Ghana was bleeding on account of smuggling of petroleum products. In 2017 alone, it was estimated that the country lost 1 billion Ghana cities on account of this nefarious activities of smugglers. But the MPA, together with the GRA, initiated steps to try and um, stem the smuggling so that the state 
will not be losing the amount of money it was losing. So they, they, they started the fight against smuggling, which is yielding some good results. According to a story by Mabel Aku, Vanessa, a friend at the Daily Graphic, from January up until this point, no smuggling has been recorded which is a great achievement by those fighting against smuggling. And we do know that in 2017, many people brought petroleum products in vessels which docked on the high seas. They used smaller, smaller vessels to go and siphon this petroleum, brought it onshore, then loaded it into tankers and then distributed it into the, onto the market, completely avoiding paying taxes there were other people too who used licenses export licenses they load the petroleum products that they said they were taking them to mali they were taking them to togo burkina faso ivory coast according to the mpa their checks revealed that none of these tankers actually went to those countries and hasan tampli told me in a conversation that he personally went to these countries and found out that they were not receiving fuel from ghana when on paper Tons of petroleum products okay. were being exported outside the country. Now, when you consider the fact that 49% of the price of, price of petroleum products is constituted by taxes, levies, and, and others, when you buy petroleum products or when you lift them and say you are going to export them, you don't pay that 49%. When you end up selling it, that 49% comes into your pocket okay. as money that should have gone to the state. So the MPA tried to stem this, and according to the story, some results are being achieved. The, both the, 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 the Association of Oil Marketing Companies, and you know that in 2017, they threatened to sack as many as 4,000 workers okay. if the smuggling didn't stop. Now, they themselves are saying um, they are excited by the work that Hassan Tampoli and the MPA are doing together with the GRE, that they will no longer sack these persons, that business is growing. Great. Um, um, Raymond, let's go to the Bono region. So. Yes, the minister there, her name is Evelyn Ama Kumi Richardson. According to Francis Ousuansa, who is reporting from Doma, the minister for the Bono region is dictating clearly that, so far as she's aware, migration and migrants from other countries are largely, and this is her specific, it's a major contributor to the kidnapping and other crimes we are seeing in this country. To her, for us to do with it properly, we have to call on landlords and other community members not to hesitate in reporting people suspected of engaging in unlawful activities to the appropriate security agents for the necessary action to be taken. She's also asking for the borders to be properly patrolled in ways that will make sure that we don't repeat these events. Of course, I've said here before that if you compare from 2014 to 20 to, to this year, the first three months of this year is the highest in terms of kidnapping cases that the police have on their records as we know it to be. But overall, 2014 is the highest yes, in, I mean, in terms of end of year. Of course, they have to take out 2019 because... I mean, 2019, of course, is, not 2019 is not ended. Yes. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. so between 2014 and 2018, 2014 is yes. the highest. So when she says recent, what they call it, migra, uh, split of mig migration, which ones is she referring to? This year, the last four, two, three, or which number of years that? Because we have tried blaming migrants for so many things in this country before. In fact, mm. some of these same sentiments were behind the Aliens Compliance Act in the 70s, which oh. rarely <laughs> backfired. Uh, uh, of course. And uh, we know that the ECOWAS has protocol of free movement, just that people ought to be regulated in the movement. Our borders still remain very porous at various ends, and it's very Do difficult Do you remember to, when yeah. the Ebola alert came up, we found out that we have about 47 unauthorized <laughs> entries that <laughs> we could count at the time. Very good. And that's if you take out the people whose front yard is in Ghana and their backyard is in Togo and other <laughs> yes, countries. <laughs> that's <laughs> interesting. But talking about kidnapping, we've okay. not forgotten the attack by the girls. Mm. We're still insisting that these girls ought to be found and brought mm. back to the people and their families and reunite them nicely. And we want to thank all the stakeholders who are adding their voice to this campaign. Yes. This morning, we had the Presbyterian Church on the 6 a.m. <laughs> news as well. Uh, Malik, let's move to uh, China, which is moving to Ghana. Yes, 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 yes. Since we couldn't build a hope city, which we promised with hope, and by the way, we were building it also in the central region, the Chinese are coming to build an industrial city also in the central region. And there's this investment vehicle, One Go. It's an investment consulting firm based in China. And it has begun negotiations, according to the Finder newspaper, with some key stakeholders 
and designed to establish an ultra modern industrial city in the central region. Now, this city is expected to cover a total land area of between 10,000 Ghana, 10,000 acres, 10,000 to 25,000 acres of land. That is the sheer size of the industrial city and uh, coastal lands with the capacity of accommodating 100 different manufacturing enterprises. So you are, you are doing one district, one factory, right? They are going to have 100 factories on a land. So one district, 100 factories. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a nice that's, ring to it. That, yes, 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 yes. billion dollars. That's a lot of money. Yes, sir, that's 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 a lot of money. And when is it coming? Oh, they are starting within the next six months. Ah. Within the next six months. Yes, yes. Okay. Within the next six months, they actually had a conversation with the chiefs in the region. Oh, why should this Mr. Alan Chairman come to studio and tell us about this? <laughs> Mr. Chairman, oh, come to studio. We want to talk about no, it. No, but he wants to see it start first. You know, from oh, experience, we have faith. <laughs> come and let's talk about it. It will come. Anyway, so so okay. they, they 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 hope to generate three hundred thousand workforce. You and, see, and that's yeah, yeah. why Mr. Alan Chermantin should come so that we, we chat about this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mr. Chermantin, yeah. good morning. Indirect jobs, 50,000 direct jobs in the area. And the project is scheduled, as I said, to commence within the next six months. Mm -hmm. And it will add $2 billion to Ghana's GDP, rake in $500 million in revenues, and $8 billion volume of trade okay. investment. Okay. I see. That's a lot of numbers. That's a it? lot of numbers. Um, another number is being added to the number of PICUs we have in Ghana. Yes, and PICUs are actually pediatric intensive care units. Kolibu is getting a new one, a very fresh one. Now, this is why this is important, because that particular current unit is receiving 6,000 people every month going there. And this is like 30,000 a year. Kids who have problems who ought to be dealt with. The problem also is that between 2013 and 2018, 5,555 kids, Ghanaian future leaders and various forms of people have died at that particular old unit. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Yes, and that's how terrible the situation is. Hopefully, this has the right kind of instruments, the right kind of equipment, the, the, the right kind of structures and systems to make sure that this expanded unit take care of our kids in a way that will make our state way better off. This is extraordinary good news because the first lady took it upon herself to make sure this project is done and it gets done. It looks like when the first lady is involved in wonderful projects, it gets done properly, on time and within range because we know that we source $50 million to build an acute and emergency center at the same Kolebu. The money is still sitting somewhere in between the Ministry of Health We've not deployed it to build a center as it's supposed to be built. And yet, we are in this state having serious issues with acute care. Remember the bed issues that came up? Remember the other issues where the other people are lying on the floor? Doctors are unavailable in the units. And even sometimes when it rains, some units... We need to, to get the first lady involved. You have to get the first lady <laughs> on that involved. Project. In fact, the minister even asked the first lady to do every teaching hospital, one, what they call it, a pediatric unit. We need to make sure that the monies we raise to do the right projects happen. So the 50 million, Daniel, ask your friends to show us where the money is. Please, where is the money? Raymond <laughs> <laughs> said I should ask you. <laughs> okay, Balik, the bank's capital has hit 9 billion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Following the consolidation of the banking sector, which um, was initiated in 2017, the business finder is reporting that the recapitalized funds and the paid up capital grew strongly from 5.05 billion to 9.02 billion. This, this, this is um, a 78.4% growth. And this is as of February um, 2019. And these were figures issued by the Bank of Ghana itself, uh, revealing its March data. Now, we know that this is essential because if the banks are not strong, they are unable to execute big projects. And at the time that the Bank of Ghana set the 400 minimum capital, um, minimum capital for the banks, both foreign and local, the thinking was that the bank's strength is dependent on what capital they have. And if they don't have enough capital, they can execute big projects. You have a mushrooming of banks that can't really do any big project to contribute to the growth of the country. After the consolidation, we know that we now have 23 banks, mm -hmm. um, which are strong enough. 15 of them are foreign-owned. The rest of them are local banks. And the Bank of Ghana says it is going to go into the microfinance industry itself to see and deal with the problems there because a large chunk of persons in the informal sector do business with these 
these um, yeah. firms. And if those firms are not strong, we may have another problem okay. on our hands in the finance sector. All right. Uh, so let's keep an eye on the finance sector, shall we? And we're going to go online. The online news review is brought to you by Zenith Bank in your best interest and Goyle Good Energy. Make your day productive by relying on quality fuel from Goyle, your three-time CIMG Petroleum Company of the Year. Goyle Super XP and Diesel XP are additivated to enhance strong engine performance and prolong the lifespan of your vehicle. Above all, you are guaranteed extra quality with our fuel analyzer from our mobile laboratory van. Get your money's worth every day by buying fuel and lubricants from any of Goyle's over 360 service stations nationwide and experience good energy. Buy Goyle. Grow Ghana. Goyle. Good energy. Goyle. Yenara Yedia. Now go light with Zenith Bank and have dinner on us at the plush African Regent Hotel. To enjoy this offer, simply use any MasterCard to make a minimum purchase of 500 Ghana cities on a Zenith Bank POS at the, the African Regent Hotel and be rewarded with a free dinner or a discount of 100 Ghana cities on other meal options. Visit the African Regent Hotel today. Use any MasterCard on a Zenith Bank POS and have dinner on us. Go light with Zenith Bank, pay light. Zenith Bank, in your best interest. Intelligence failure caused CID bosses gaff. Ex-police chief, I just shared it on, on, on Facebook. Uh, Paul Ayuvi is a former police chief superintendent and he was speaking with Evans Mentor on PM Express last night. And he said that this was a, a failure in intelligence gathering that caused a Madame Tiwa um, Adodanka, C-O-P-T Adodanka, to make that statement that they know where the girls are. <laughs> yes, that's his opinion. Government to set up National Hydrology Authority to check floods. Mr. Samuel Atachia, a Works and Housing Minister, speaking there. He says the Hydrological Authority will have the mandate of drawing up a flood management program to stem the recurrence of devastating floods in the country. And in the meantime, whilst we are waiting for the authority, they need yeah. my drain. You know, the Nima Dream, yes. the one that... The one that we took 200 million for, can we just get it done? No, no at yes. least let's do the desilting. Because yeah. remember, he was here and he said, yes, he told to us categorically it. that he will do the desilting. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, the rains have started. Today, the weather forecast was 4 to 8 in the afternoon. 4 to 8 in the morning, 4 to 7 in the in the afternoon. I'm talking about millimeters of rain. Mm -hmm. uh, so, please, whilst we wait for the authority, you know, Mr. Mr. Thatcher, thank you very much. Do something now. Economist Intelligence Units predict 2020 victory for Ekufuado. Okay. Um, now, this report was released on the 13th of May 2019. Mr. Kufado will face a challenge from John Mahama, Ghana's president from 2012 to early 2017, who was elected leader of the opposition 2019. But uh, Mr. Kufado, the president, and his MPP will see the country's economic situation generally improve and during the remainder uh, of their terms of office. All right. Uh, win for Mr. Kufado, according to EIU there. GraphicOnline.com, Elizabeth Ohini writes... Rosewood, the timber to kill for. You want to read that one? The BBC.com also has a South African woman who has conquered Mount, Mount Everest. Congratulations to Sare Kumalo, who is the first black African woman to scale Mount Everest, the world's highest mountain. It's 8,850 meters high. Wow. That's 29,000 feet. Do you know that I'm... I'm very close to six feet. So <laughs> the number of Daniel Dazis you have to line up to make one Mount Everest. It's, it's, it's very depressing. Okay. Um, oh, on the back page of the of the Daily Graphic, let me just slip this in. Um, graphic journalists... Okay, so this is on page 38, pardon me. Graphic journalists celebrate a retired news editor. Mr. Nehemiah... Kweku Nehemiah Usa Chow, retired news editor. Oh, I see um, a Samsung fr a fridge in there. <laughs> And a number of goodies that he's receiving. Uh, good job, well done. Oh, and I see a smiling class P de la Russell in there um, with celebrating with Mr. Oswachow. Congratulations, sir. We're going to take these important messages. We'll be right back. <laughs> 